Welcome, everyone, to another Citadel. There's loads of them. So many of them. It's mad. I can't even keep up with them. Well, let's choose one. Today, I would like to choose the Traitless Citadel, because Traitless enemies, they're always a little bit funky and interesting and difficult and challenging. And I want to see how they appear and in what form in this tower and whether we can have any more success here than we did on the zombie one. So let's find out. We're going to move over to our patented fast boy slot and get going. Now go vroom. Oh, okay. We've got a teacher bear, gory, kangaroo, which means basically loads of mummies. But this, what I'm doing here, is not really the fastest way to be doing it, but fast enough. 7144, a rich cat, lovely jubbly. I'll bear that in mind for the beginner account as well, because I'm in desperate need of items there. Floor two, we're going to start with the squishy ball, there's a Jackie Pang, and then we're going to get a Maglevin, Manic Cow, Lion Boy. It's the Leone, the Leone Hippo. How do I remember its name? How of all things to remember did I remember that? That is funky. Floor three, we move and we move quickly. Oh, instant boss. Oh, it's the happy, jumpy man and the, the, the welcome and oh my God, we've been large scale frozen. Well, I remember with this thing, it's, it's a matter of doing lots of hits, I think, or at least that was kind of the traditional way to deal with it. Probably doesn't matter, has very little health. That's essentially the fastest we've done it so far. Though, no, that's XP, not time score. I wonder why I got exactly the same time score. I just read out the XP figure as if it meant anything. Nice. Oh, it's the Hatsune Miku guys. They've got such lovely lights. Oh, that's fantastic. I love them. That's great. And Legsy. Oh, you know, I, I keep saying this, but it is so nice to just see stuff return. I love these kind of best of compilations, you know. Another victory. Floor 4, 250,000 XP. Very nice indeed. I need some energy. Let's just give ourselves some energy. We're that kind of guy. Maglev. Oh, perfectly mistimed. Uh, it's, it's, it's strong drunk man who might not actually be as strong as he'd like to be. Okay, we might be struggling a little bit for monies until Maglev kills something. And with Maglev actually dead, we might need to change tack. I am still just going to save for another Maglev, though, I think. And then by that time, we have enough monies for an Abraham. Fantastic. Then we can move on to the base. There's a, a summer teacher bear, but, mate, it's winter. Just no one cares. Floor six. Oh, okay. We've got a Rain D. We've got the... Biker Dagson, we've got Cellaboodle, we've got the big summer Cellaboodle. And what we're going to do is let this stuff a little bit forward so that we can just pick off the Cellaboodle. Will that work? No, because Manic Macho Legs is taking the battle into its own hands. Oh well, it's doing a good job of it, so I'll allow it. We'll do some more constant meat shields now this time until we've got monies for a Bahamut. It may well get knocked back and killed by all of the shenanigans going on here, but we're going to take the risk because it could pay off very nicely indeed. We got one hit. We got the cellar boodle, and that's allowing us to get loads more stuff. We got two hits. We've knocked back the big biker dagshund man. We got another hit. Killed him. Cellar boodle got us. There's a whole lot of ping-ponging back and forward, and the outcome of it is Abraham is still alive. We've been successful, and we are fantastic. 400,000 XP. Let's go to floor seven. I don't know why I'm waiting this time, but we've got one of those high school gories, and you know what we're going to do with it? We're going to go maglev. We're going to go meat shielding. And that that was kind of a pointless bit of strategy, because it's just dead. But it has allowed us to get an Abahama. Oh, and it's a very go-go graduates version. This is the lucky ticket stage on at this current moment. Well, Abahama should hopefully be able to clear out these school dwelling rascals then we'll be fine look at that abraham's dead made a valiant effort unfortunately we don't have anything really big ticket beyond that so hopefully a stack of manic lions and a manic macho legs behind it will be enough power it's debatable but the big tanky boss man is gone we've got an iron wall up we can continue spamming the lions and I think that things are probably turning in our favor just a pesky pesky master a left and then that'll be fine. All going rather smoothly so far. Floor eight, let's get going. Got 160 energy, these are. Flipping heck, right, Maglev, then a Manic Mohawk, and oh, goodness, oh my god, it's Easter Douche, I love that so much. This is gonna require a little bit more thinking. 
Okay. I, I don't suppose, no, it, it has been more than 10 seconds. So I will join you when I start this in a more sensible way, because luckily it's still a continue stage. Ah, do you hear that? Blessed silence and quiet. Very nice. Lots of opportunity to gain lots of monies. Just simply a douche grazing along the battlefield, walking so contentedly and happily. Oh. Let's go. So much for upgrading the worker cat, but we do now have a little bit more force in our army and no cat combo banner obscuring what's coming out. So hopefully we'll be able to see a little bit better as well. Our Ost, yet before I could even get to the end of that sentence, is going to cause a massive amount of trouble. I have sacrificed my actual ability to get this done. If I'm going to be able to do it with this slot that I currently have here and this energy that's been spent, I'm gonna need to think a little bit more carefully about how I'm doing it. So this time I've managed to get all the way up to level 5 worker cap by the time the douche arrives and we are just going to stall it. We're surviving quite a long time with each manica razor. But let's start building some stuff up now because some stuff is appearing enemy wise. We'll get a few more meat shields, join a ramen to the party, get maybe like a nice tanky row, nothing that's doing too much damage, but everything that has a decent amount of health. That brings us to level 7, worker cat row takes a lovely shot, getting a douche gone there, get another meat shield out, and then max worker cat. Fantastic. Now we can properly build up. Let's start stacking, ideally, legs like that. That worked reasonably. Okay, so as stuff nears the base, we'll bring out the fast stuff so that everything's sort of arriving to the base at the same time. Give us the best chance against a very dangerous looking Arost. A different way we could try and do this is the old lure and push through, which might work for the Arost, but at the moment we're just going to attempt to brute force it and I'll bring in Abrahama once we can kill some of this stuff because I reckon the massive clump that there is is just going to be too much for Abrahama. I mean, we've seen that. It will just bounce him back and kill him before he can really do anything. And Oh, hang on a minute. That's a little bit more troublesome. Two Arosts. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what to say, especially as the eggy douche is still there. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen with this slot. I, I think we can probably safely say that. Yeah, no. Okay, we're doing it properly, but we're doing it very, very properly indeed. And that is no gacha. I've adapted what I brought with me to the zombie citadel. And we also have with us the rather fancy anti-traitless tourist cat, because I feel like there would be much ire in the comments if I did not bring that with me. We've also got lots of dragons and legs for stacking. And of course, the solution to everything, Jewel Islands. Thank you very much. However, they might be too good a solution. I hope that they're not too powerful because we, we do still need to stall. I think we're going to be just about all right, actually. Our islands have put up a good fight, but not a strong enough one, which means we are moved back and we can start stack a lack in. So let's get our razors out. Then dragons. Then legs. Yeah, legs. Let's go for legs as well. I mean, it's going to be too powerful to just stay and stall, but we got plenty of monies from that and max worker cat. So we'll get Taurus Cat out, our solution to everything, more meat shields, can't put the dragons out again, but we'll just see where we go from here, and hopefully this will be fine. We can also put out an... Oh, it's a holy blast! Oh, for goodness sake, that's one thing I didn't sort out, right? I was so excited for my iron wall to just appear, but what is quite exciting was a little brief freeze that we got on our Ost, and that was real and manifested in this strategy. So that's good. The stack is proving very nice. Taurus Cat is proving absolutely lovely. We can get a Bahama now, and I'm going to send that in now. There's slightly less on the battlefield. A fantastic whack onto our Ost. Magical. And we did get a hit on Eggy Douche. Unfortunately, nothing more from Abrahama because the second Arost is out and causing us trouble. This is where we're going to have our issue. If we're able to get waves through and get Camel with those waves, then we might be fine. Unfortunately, at the moment, Camel is proving to be an extremely formidable backline, one that we don't really have any answer to. And unless we kill one of these Arosts, we're just going to be moved into and oh okay we killed one of the Arosts 
Well, isn't that mighty convenient? That's given us monies to put out everything we have. We might be able to turn the tide of the battle now. That'd be pretty tidy, wouldn't it? Oh, I love the force of a stacked dragon. Look, the enemies have just halted. There's nothing they can do. This is really rather beautiful, actually. I'm loving the no gacha energy. We didn't need to change a strat at all. We have done wonderfully well. I love that immensely. And we'll certainly be taking this into our next adventure. Minus, of course, the Holy Blast. But anyway, 750,000 XP. Let's go into the equip menu. Turn to something like a slow beam. And, ladies and gentlemen, we begin the final part of the Citadel, the No Continues quest. What have we got to start us off? Ah, good. Blessed sight, not blessed silence. Let's get a dragon out for uh, these, those guys. A nice single shot attack. Should be pretty good for stalling. I mean, that sloth is going to move over to us. Or, or sloths. <laughs> they multiplied, oh dear. Um, but not immensely quickly. So we'll have a good opportunity to stack up some dragons. And ah, it's the Easter Bunny. I love the jumping animation of that one. It's so jolly and, and sort of Chaplin-esque. Shouldn't be too powerful, although you never quite know what the magnification is going to be. And an h -nar. Okay, well, I think that Meat Shields and Dragon Stack will be fine for an h -nar. We can get up to level 6 Worker Cat. That's good. I think I am just going to keep Meat Shielding. Try and make sure I can get to Max Worker Cat before we start spamming stuff on the regular. Dragon Stack is holding up fairly nicely. A Bahama is tempting, but I will stick to my word and get us max work cat. And also, we definitely need to clear out this absolute mass of those guys before we even consider bringing out a Bahama. It's not going to be the sort of thing we want to use when there's a whole load of peons up in front. But we cleared them out. We've got a few good hits on some HNRs. Unfortunately, the sloths clipped Bahama there, so not able to deliver any killing blows, really. But we've regulated what's there. And monies don't seem to be an issue either, because I think the HNRs are dying relatively consistently. Consistently. So this is, you know, really rather a turn up for the books. We're doing all right here. This is an almighty stack of dragons. I mean, they've got a pretty formidable stack of enemies, but nothing quite like what we have here. It is extraordinary. Well, I think we'll be getting to lag levels of dragons in the same place soon if we're not careful. Right, we're going to risk an Abahama. Let's go. Boom! One hit. Abahama did get knocked back and killed by that one but we have cancelled them all out. Fantastic. The sloths are gone. Our massive load of dragons will probably make relatively short work of the base. Oh, yeah, they will. They will. That, that was pretty quick. The biggest dragon whack takes like 200,000 damage at once. That is pretty beautiful. And with that, on to the final floor. I'm optimistic now be that misplaced or not. We've got a wall doge to start us off. Okay, I'm just going to Put out a cautionary eraser, I guess, in case there's something that makes us regret stalling. But at the moment, honestly, just meat shields from their point of view. It's a pretty equal start to the battle from both sides. All right, a Cory. I like that. I didn't even think of Cory appearing, but of course it is traitless. So in that case, we will just, I think, do the solution to everything and maybe some nice distanced legs. But meat shields are not the order of the day at the moment. Now, I can imagine that this will be a very powerful Cory, but it can't really hit us too many times if we're not using meat shields. So we'll hopefully be fine from that point of view. We've also got Taurus. Thank you, Taurus, for demonstrating very nicely freezing the Cory. Of course, the wall doges are going to make this more difficult, them being sort of enemy meat shields. And monies are also going to be tight. That's the one thing I guess the wall dojas can really help with. Okay, it's just us and the Cory. And thank you, King Dragon, for knocking it back, because I really did need that, because I was hoping to get myself an Abahama, just like that, for some nice tasty attacks to keep the Cory away from the base. And if we can keep attacking before it does, nearly again there, very nearly, we'll be able to kill it off just like that. Oh, fantastic. Everything's on cue today. What's in the... <laughs> Oh my god, a little ice spore. What even is that? That was cute. And I've never seen that before. Oh, Doba PD. How I've missed you. It's dark web, but like a cold dark web. We've got Mammoth. We've got some kind of trendy haired ice boar, which does extremely quick waves and um, not very many monies to deal with all of it. This might be a little bit interesting and, and also 
utterly and completely insurmountable. There are just not the monies to be dealing with this. Given the battle starts off so quickly, I'm gonna bring a rich cat with me next time. But the strat? I'm happy with the strat. Okay, let's get moving and grooving. We'll start off with Abraham at this time because we are an absolute lord of chaos. Maglev is possibly something else that would help here, although maybe not with the sheer mass of stuff that comes out afterwards. As I said, I am quite happy with this strategy as it currently looks. And there we go, Cory is dealt with, and we've got 6,000 monies and a whole clump of stuff as the bosses emerge from the base. Okay, Abraham may not have such a massive impact here because there is loads of stuff, but no, it's getting valuable hits in to be fair, and it didn't die there, which is just so many bonus points. Unfortunate it didn't get a bounce back attack there, but it's fine. We're, we've got other problems. That flipping ice ball being the issue. Uh, oh dear. Yeah, no, it's it's causing me more problems than last time. We're already back at our own base, despite the, the increase of items. We're, we're getting a little bit mashed up by this ice ball. I dare say we were quite lucky with the ice ball last time because it's it's just caused us far too much trouble this time around. It ain't happening for us. It's really not happening for us. I might have to make a small concession to the, the no gacha thing. Shadow Gow! He's back. Look at him dispensing with all of this stuff, and I already feel about 80% less skilled, but he might be my ticket out of this tower, so we're just gonna roll with it. So we've got a pretty decent clump as we move forward to deal with this stuff. Let's just get that ice ball back. Might not have been the best choice, to be honest, because that's just putting it amongst the other stuff, and that is gonna cause absolute havoc. As we can very much see there, oh my goodness me, Shadow Gao is still alive, and that's the important thing. It's wave resistance, so it's only the damage from the, the hit of the ice ball that can cause it problems. Although it might, it's very upfront in this battle, and I really don't want to be shown to look a little bit silly by immediately losing with Shadow Gao. And although we can take Doberman and both of the Corys in one Shadow Gao hit, which is, as you can see, immensely helpful, as soon as that Ice Boar comes along, it decimates everything that I have. Mind you, my moth is gone, and that is excellent. Dober is gone, and that is also excellent. And Cory, I assume it's also not long for this world as we march on towards the base and success. Alas, it shall be a hollow victory, but a victory nonetheless. And people told me last time not to get hung up on no gacha at the end of these citadels. I think Red gave me the idea that it should be possible, but maybe it just isn't. And maybe sometimes you need your shadow gal. That's, a, that's the moral of today. Come on, guys. Just get your shadow gal out. It's not that difficult. All right, so that means two out of three citadels so far. Not too bad, not too good, but it's been enjoyable and there's a lot more citadels to tackle, which I'm sure we will in the near future. But for now, this'll do. So I bid you goodbye and I hope you enjoyed.